Next on our, and actually the, the beginning of that long-term real estate success formula we talked about is actually GDP growth. GDP growth leads to employment, employment leads to population. It's very simple. Like I, those are the three founding statistics that you really want to get a handle on. And, uh, and if we go right back to the, the, the OG of it all, if you will, it's GDP. What's happening with GDP in your particular region, not even just in the province, but the province helps for sure. But what's happening in that particular region? Uh, and, and here you have the, the GDP growth forecast for 2023, Patrick. Uh, now this was 20, we're now in 2024. So, so we're already, you know, and that's the thing with this data is it's lagging information and we're just, we're not going to get the full GD, uh, 2023 numbers for a couple months. We're going to be almost halfway through 2024 before we figure it out, before they figure out what the hell happened in 2023. Well, I think this is fundamentally where we go back to a couple of things, you know, this chart does shine a light on the diversity of the different provinces. And we start to see, for example, if you correlate what's happening in this particular GDP chart with the unemployment, you start to see just exactly what we're talking about. As GDP slows down, you start to see unemployment come up. Uh, Ontario is a perfect example of that versus Alberta, for example. Now, that's all to say that when we look at the GDP, it, it is in fact lagging, but you know something, this goes back to even what I said about the disconnect of what's happening with the Bank of Canada or our finance minister, or our government in general, the disconnect from what's going on in real time. You know, and this is where we're talking to investors. You're in the trenches every day of business. I'm in the trenches every day of business. We're talking to individuals who are at the effect of it. So we also are taking uh, notes and, and kind of coming to conclusions with where things are going based on what we're hearing on the street individuals and business owners, investors who are actually going through what's happening in the economy today. And that also allows us to kind of extrapolate on some of this data. So when we see what's happening in Ontario, uh, there's no doubt that things have slowed down. There's argument, I guess, depending what bank you talk to, what for or what econ economist you talk to, there is definitely some shifting, if you will, of what's happening economically. They're looking for very flat, maybe negative GDP. We've gone from a soft landing to now they're calling for a soft recession. And we're seeing it. We're hearing about it. We're talking to business owners that are going, things are really tough right now. And so there's something to just be aware of as we go forward. There's going to be a lag. So that's what we got going on there, JP. Now, this all uh, happens to, and uh, you talked about correlating GDP with uh, migration or with population. And this is one of the numbers we track very, very closely, which is interprovincial migration, which is where do people, what, what provinces are people leaving and what provinces are people going to? <laughs> it's interesting because right now they're all going to Alberta. And, uh, and I'll give it to you. I, I love to point out when you're wrong and it happens a lot and it happens often. But I also, I also love to point out when you're right. And you called this one really, really well in uh, 2020. I think you called Alberta going through a boom. And it was a very, very good call. And I benefited because I started moving investments into Alberta. And it's worked out awesome. So not only do I point out when you're wrong, Patrick, I also listen when you're right. Yeah. You know, last episode that we did, we talked about what's going on in Alberta. And, you know, there's still a there's a bit of a cautionary note here. Because when we look at, number one, there's a lot of people moving into the province. Let's start there. And the reason they're moving into the province is, number one, there's jobs. But supporting all of that is the fact that people are looking to Alberta because of the cost of living, a much lower cost of living, uh, far lower, as a matter of fact. And then also, I'm going to say it, it's political, but it's the truth. Leadership. The province right now with Danielle Smith has got strong leadership. She's making great decisions. She's taking stands for what is in the best interest of the province. And I know not everybody agrees with that, given, you know, you're either NDP politically or you're uh, conservative on the other side of it. So there is that always the, the uh, polarity and debate. But at the end of the day, strong leadership. A strong you, job you think, market. Do you think it's happening? Uh, so I agree, Patrick. Let me just jump in. I, I agree with you um, uh, on many points, but I'm just curious. Do you think the leadership's actually having a, an effect already? I mean, these numbers here are July to September 2023, but like Danielle Smith's been, only been in recently, right? Like she hasn't, it's not like she's been in for two, three years and people are really starting to see her decisions. I mean, she's relatively new to the game. What does that have to do with it? No, no. 
He's got a point. In terms yeah, of being elected. She, I uh, Yes, but I follow it pretty closely. And listen, she's out there. She's making strong statements. She's pushing back hard against the federal government. And whether you agree with her or not, I think is secondary to one fundamental, which is this, is she is a politician, a leader that is taking a stand in the best interest of the province. Now, the difference is she is not choosing politics over policy. She is choosing policy over politics. And so those who disagree with her disagree vehemently. Like they're like dead set against her. Those who are behind her are 100% behind her. But ultimately she's showing leadership and she isn't pandering to the masses with policies or politics over policy. And that's, I think, one of the fundamental differences. And she's really putting it out there in a very uh, public way. You know, she's posting stuff. She's looking into the camera. She's making big statements. And they're not just, she's not being a populist. She's making decisions. And I admire it. I'll tell you what, though, Patrick, what I want to find out, if anybody listening to this knows Danielle Smith or has any connection over there, I want to get Danielle Smith on this uh, show with Mr. Alberta himself. Uh, I think it, I, I, it's got to happen. So, folks, please pass this along, forward share, send it to her office. I want Danielle Smith on this show. I want to I want to take uh, her and Mr. Alberta into uh, into the show. I think it would be fantastic. What do you think, PF? <laughs> We'd crush it. And by the way, I'm as you know, JG, I'm a fan of no politician with the exception of Danielle Smith. She's really won me over the past six months. I'm going, you go, girl. Like, she's amazing. <laughs> now, uh, as we go forward, Patrick, uh, you know, we talked about in the long term real estate success formula. These this data has an effect on real estate. And one of the things it does is and this just recently came out where, you know, some of the GTA and, and, and listen, everybody sees, uh, you know, the, the, the trend of this show, which is, you know, we show all the negative mm. stuff about Ontario on this show. And then we show all the positive stuff about Alberta on this show. And that's why we we've renamed Albertario. At least I came up with that. We're calling Alberta Albertario because we've had so many investors move from Ontario to Alberta. Uh, but the, some of these numbers uh, have come out recently. And this really goes back to what you talk about, Patrick, which is where the media loves to feast on data when it's when it's really, really bad. And this is a perfect example where they've recently published this kind of peak to trough of, of uh, real estate prices and showing how everyone's losing their shirt, which isn't true, by the way. But boy, do they love to, to go into this data when it uh, aligns with their narrative. I think there's a couple things that we have to consider here. And that is that, you know, first off, I'm agnostic. I, you know, I'm not pro-Alberta, down on Ontario, up on BC, like none of that. I'm only looking at what's going on economically. So when I'm speaking to a community of real estate investors, it's not about Ontario's bad, Alberta's good. I'm only looking at the data that's driving and saying, okay, why? When we started talking about Alberta uh, back in 2020, late 2019, it was because we started to see the shift in what was happening in the housing market and the upside that investors could enjoy through this run. Now, we've been doing that. So I want to just be really clear about something in, in that regard. So when we look at what's happening in the province of Alberta, we're saying, OK, economically, as an investor, you want to look at that particular province right now. Ontario, be cautious. So go back to this chart that you're seeing is ultimately when you look at house prices and the way that it's presented in this particular chart, they're comparing the downside is down 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever the number is, 50 percent. But what's it down from? It's down from the peak of 2022. I think most of these numbers are from and. If you're an investor, you didn't invest for the short term. Well, some of you did. That would be speculating. The housing for those are who are bought a home and then now the price of their home has come down, then, yeah, psychologically it'll beat you up. But you didn't buy a house to live in to sell it a year or two later. Now, there's exceptions to all of that, JG. You know, first off, you got transferred, you got laid off, you got to sell your house. Oh, my gosh, I got to take a loss on top of losing my job. That's one scenario. You know, if you're an investor who was saying, well, I'm going to buy the house, I'm going to flip it. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that. And we've seen a lot of that in the pre-construction. Then, yeah, you probably got caught because now you have to go for a mortgage and it's valued at far less. And now you have to put more money in the game or you have to let it go. You weren't anticipated getting the mortgage 
mortgage, let alone making huge payments on it. All to say this, that's a very small segment of the market, but it does make for really big headlines. I, I also want to point out, Patrick, one thing which is interesting because uh, we, through DI Vault, uh, and for those of you that don't know about DI Vault, go to di-vault.com. Um, you can check everything out there. We have a concierge club that we've created, oh boy, just towards the, the end of 2023. And we were showing deals, Patrick, and we showed a lot of deals where the cap rates in Ontario are better than Alberta right now in, in many different circumstances. So it's interesting, right? And I think this is where, and I, I love your point about being agnostic, which is, you know, you can't get emotionally involved to any particular province. Your job as an investor is to put your money to work and your money to work harder for you than you work for it. And if you're going to do that and you're going to look at all the different markets, there's incredible opportunities right now in Ontario. And in fact, there's incredible opportunities in many different provinces if you can uh, uh, choose wisely. But you got to look at the data. That's the message we're trying to send here. A hundred percent. You know, here's the thing about it. You know, you've been doing it. Like there's smoking hot deals happening in Ontario right now. This goes back to what we said. Look at the data, be logical in your thinking, get out of the fray and the drama of big headlines and ultimately take advantage of the deals that are starting to show up in Ontario, for example. Here's what's going on in Alberta on the other side of it, JG. We talked about it in the last show, which is we see a lot of emotion-driven capital coming in to the province of Alberta. Specifically, we're seeing a lot of that happen in Calgary. I have said, and I'll continue to say, that one is gonna come back. It'll probably be two years, maybe three years, and we're gonna hear about all the Ontario investors that went into the condo market in Alberta and are now upside down and being challenged with what they've got going on. And then we're gonna call you Mr. Ontario because you'll flip and now you'll be all Ontario. I know what's happening. Uh, specifically the condo market, it is just unbelievable. The emotion driven uh, kind of swell of capital into that market. I mean, realtors in Calgary are loving it if they can get inventory, but it doesn't make any sense. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter, where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.